you, but since January, I have been feeling more hopeful about, um, you know, the future. And I'm, I sort of see a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think, yes, uh, maybe um, our lives will start to look a little more normal um, coming up here shortly. So I'm, I'm really excited. So with that sort of feeling, I created this, um, these next few slides. Uh, to sort of inspire you all. So thank you so much. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lily Ortiz. I'm with LA Metro. I manage their On The Move Writers Program. And I want to quickly just introduce my team members. Uh, Jessica, Carlos, and Stacy are all on the line. Um, and they are here supporting us. So I wanna just sort of, hey, Carlos. Yeah, I just wanna recognize everybody. Thank you guys. Um, thank you team for, for supporting. Um, so just some quick ground rules. If you could please mute yourself while we're um, getting started here. And if you have any questions throughout the um, program here today, please make sure to drop them into the chat box. Carlos and Stacy are going to be watching the chat box and they will uh, make certain to um, share your questions. So make sure that you um, drop those questions into the chat box and we'd be happy to. Um, hey, Pauls, can you mute yourselves? Thank you very much. All right. So welcome to our older adult transportation pop up. This is our Gateway Cities edition. Today's presenters will be me. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about the top five transit friendly destinations in gateway cities. Um, we'll have a guest from RideGo uh, talking about Metro Micro. For those of you who don't know, Metro Micro is a somewhat something like an Uber service, but it's um, Metro employees who are driving the vehicles. Um, and then we'll have a presenter to talk about the Willowbrook Rosa Park Station Improvement Project. So that is Again, exciting. We're looking forward to when we're traveling and what we will uh, be seeing when we're out there. So what is on the Move Riders program? For those of you who aren't familiar, um, our program is designed to help older adults learn how to use the buses and the trains. And we do that in a number of ways. We um, host educational presentations, uh, we lead uh, transit tours, we host events, and pre-COVID, all of this happened in person. So Carlos, Jessica, and Stacy and myself would be out in the community hosting these events. We so miss being with uh, you all in public, and uh, we're looking forward to getting back to that. Another very special part of our program is our travel training. We have um, a number of volunteers who plan and lead outings for the people in their community. These volunteers are from all over um, and in the gateway cities. We have four active clubs out of the city of Cerritos, Lacers Harbor, Long Beach Senior Center and the Weingart Senior Center in Lakewood. Um, if you're interested in joining one of our clubs, as we look forward to when we can be out and traveling, please feel free to reach out to me and I can connect you with our volunteers um, because I know that they're raring to get out and ride. And um, yeah, we'd love to have you join us. Um, you know, it's so very important for, um, for us to learn how to use these services, this transit that's available to us, um, and having a little help from someone is, is all you really need because it isn't rocket science, but it's a great way to get out, meet new friends, and learn about your community. So please feel free to contact me with any questions on that. So in lieu of, um, no, that's not the right word, but because we're going to be talking about destinations and I wanted to give you some tools to help you start doing some research. Um, one of the things that we teach folks when we're out in public 
uh, at presentations is trip planning. Trip planning is so important because I don't know about you, but I like to know where I'm going when I am planning a trip on transit. So there are a number of different ways that you can access this information. If you've got a telephone, you can call Metro. If you've got a computer, which clearly you all do, you can go to our website, metro.net, or you can go to Google Maps. Um, if you have a smartphone or a tablet, you can go ahead and download all sorts of free applications. And then we always, of course, still have good old fashioned maps and schedules. And if you ever wanted to learn about a route near you, you could call that telephone number to find out what is in your general area. I would say that calling and telling them where your nearest intersection is and telling them where you would like to go is all you really need. So it's, it's really quite easy um, once you get to playing with it. So if you have some time and you're inspired by the destinations that I'm gonna um, share with you in just a moment, you know, why not go on to metro.net and see, hmm, there is a shopping center that I would like to check out. How realistic is it for me to complete this trip? You can learn about how many transfers you might have, how long it will take, how much walking you'll do. All of this important information can be very, very helpful to make your travels um, as, as successful as possible. Because I don't know about you, like every time I'm out, like I, presenting on this people say oh you know I just I just want to go see I'm not the kind of person who just wants to go see I need to have detailed instructions I do not want to get lost um, so these are just a few tools that you can start you know playing with um, if you've got a smartphone you may already have an app on there that you use for driving directions that can be used for transit directions so consider um, just playing with your phone and finding some fun destinations um, near you. Are there any questions in the chat box, Carlos or Stacy? No, oh, there, there isn't anything in there yet, Lily. Lily, I have one from uh, Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a question about any presentations for those uh, who live in the Antelope Valley. Okay. Um, she says some of, of uh, her retirees live in Palmdale, Lancaster, Quartz Hill. Well, Mary, I'm so happy that you're um, interested in learning more. We have uh, a monthly meeting that happens for folks in the San Fernando Valley, which also encompasses the Antelope Valley. Um, when we follow up with our email after this meeting, I'll make sure to list all of the different meetings that we host and when they happen and who you can contact to join the meeting. So Mary, we'll send that out to you via email um, following this meeting. All right, kids, let's get going. Let's talk about the top five transit friendly destinations in Gateway City. So uh, for those of you who aren't from Gateway Cities, you'll see a map and sort of outlines all the different cities that make up uh, gateway cities. Personally, I live in the San Gabriel Valley and prior to my um, working here at Metro, I didn't even know what gateway cities was. So there may be some of you here who don't know what gateway cities is, but Long Beach, Artesia, Lakewood, Norwalk, Downey, you see them all there. Um, so I'm going to highlight some destinations um, within this. And basically these destinations were based on our club travels. I mentioned our riders clubs and the volunteers who lead, it, who lead these trips. I wanted to compile a list of destinations that you could look forward to visiting in the future. The, more, the, ma the majority are very transit friendly and less than a mile of walking is required. If any of you have been to these destinations and can add additional information, feel, feel free to drop drop those into the chat 
box. The following slides will highlight what, what was, well, let's just get into it. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say. The first one is the Citadel outlets. The Citadel outlets are the, it's the basically the only um, outlet shopping in Los Angeles. Um, it was the Samson Tire and Rubber Factory built in the 1930s. At the time, it was the largest tire factory west of the Mississippi. The factory closed in 1978, and it's it's this beautiful facade. Um, I'm sure that you've all seen it if you've uh, been along the five freeway. Um, it's based on an Assyrian castle in grand style to commemorate ancient Babylon culture. It's visible, as I said, from the five freeway. The large format signs blind you as you're driving past um, and they blink these uh, messages to over 500,000 vehicles. So it's off of the five freeway between Atlantic and Telegraph. Um, it, as I said, it's the only outlet in LA and houses more than 130 top name brand name stores and restaurants. Our clubs have traveled there in, in November and a lot of our clubs do it like right before Christmas so that they can start doing their shopping. They'll have a nice lunch uh, at the Citadel. Uh, it is, uh, as I mentioned, in the City of Commerce. Um, it's serviced by our Metro local bus number 62 and also the Citadel Outlet Express bus, which picks up at Union Station and it's actually a free ride. So it's a nice, nice ride. Um, what's that? No, no. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, the the bus stop is right in front. There is a three minute walk. Um, you essentially just round the corner and you're at the, the location. But lots of great shopping. Christmas time, it looks beautiful. They put up this huge tree that you can literally see from miles and they put a nice big bow on the top of the, the facade. So that's always a fun destination, one that I highly recommend. The next one is Pio Pico State Historic Park. Pio Pico witnessed, shaped, and influenced nearly a century of California history in the 1800s. He was the last ter territorial governor under Mexican rule. The five, acre, the five acre park encompasses historic gardens and the beautifully restored adobe home of Pio Pico. A bell marks the original El Camino Real, which passed directly in front of the park during Pio Pico's times. Visitors can enjoy the park with picnics, bird watching, and exploring the park's features, including a 15 room adobe with interpretive displays, an orno or bread oven, and a dovecote. Guided tours of the adobe are offered by appointment only during the week. But now you can go to their website, which I will share with you, um, and enjoy a 3D tour. And I again, it, it's it's a pretty pretty cool place. If you're really interested in California history, I highly recommend. Okay. Hold on one sec, having some technical difficulties. Hey, Lily, while you're doing that, Lily, you have a question there. Isn't there an Indian hotel and casino next to the Citadel outlets? Maybe not an Indian casino. There's a Calif the, the Commerce Casino is, is um, just next door to the Citadel. So yes, right. you could probably take that. Um, I've never taken it to the casino, but you could probably take the Commerce um citadel outlet express bus i imagine it goes there um yeah. but yeah there is a commerce casino and, and lily you have one other question sure. why are they gateway cities what is necessary and sufficient to be a gateway city um if you noticed my map hopefully let me see sorry for waiting lily. no that's okay if you take a look at the screen again you'll see um the map 
this whole region from Long Beach to the south to Commerce to the north to La Habra to the east and Compton to the west, all of these cities make up the Gateway City region of LA County. These are the same as the supervisorial districts, are they not, Lily? Correct. Correct. Yes. Supervisorial. Okay. All right. Next destination is the LA County Fire Museum um, in Bellflower. This is a museum, of course. There is a, a donation of $5 to um, enjoy it, but the museum is filled with displays of fire apparatus and artifacts. Museum is home to Engine 51 from the 1970s show Emergency. I don't know if you guys remember that, but they've got the Engine 51 there. It includes a large collection of rigs from hand-drawn, horse-drawn, and from the early 20th century to the modern era. It offers docent-led tours by retired firefighters. Whoa! Contact the museum to arrange your tour. Now you can check out their website, which I will share with you before the um, at the end of this um, meeting. There's a 3D museum tour that you can enjoy now. So ladies, retired firefighters, um, the museum is served by Metro Local 127 and 128, also by Norwalk Transit. And Alondra and Bellflower is the intersection uh, closest to it. The walk is about six minutes, uh, three tenths of a mile. That's not bad. So I know that our clubs have um, visited this uh, museum specifically and really enjoyed it. Any comments? Any questions? Hey, yeah. We have a couple of uh, questions. Okay. Um, going back to the Citadel. Uh -huh. So if going to the Citadel and taking the express bus from Union Station, does one also need to take that 62 bus? Why was the 62 local mentioned? So in each for each destination, I've put all of the different um, buses that serve that spot. Um, just for your information, if you if you live close to Union Station and it makes sense for you to pick it up at Union Station, then taking that um, free bus, the Citadel Outlet Express bus makes most sense. But other people might live within Commerce and maybe the 62 bus works better for them. So I, I just list all of the different uh, uh, lines that do serve the area, just so that you know. So if there are people out there who are like, oh, I know that bus that runs by my house. Um, it's just so that people can know what else goes to the destination. Okay, perfect. And then there was one, where can we find a copy of this presentation? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going to follow up um, the presentation with an email and I'll give you all of the information so that if you want to um, plan your trip or uh, just keep this handy for when you're ready to travel, I'm, I'm happy to share it. So I'll share it with everybody here at our meeting. All right, ready for the next one? Any more questions out there? We're going to move on. This one is probably one of my favorites and one that I actually traveled with one of our clubs to. It's Little India in the city of Artesia. If you're a fan of um, Indian food, it is the place to be. So Little India in Artesia is the largest Indian enclave in Southern California. As of 2003, approximately 120 shops in the area cater to Indian customers. It's a great day trip and perhaps the most delicious destination. You can find things on home decor, clothing, beauty, threading of your eyebrows, which I personally enjoy, or henna tattooing is available uh, throughout um, this destination. Um, something that I do remember most about traveling 
uh, is the delicious food and the markets, just walking through and seeing all the different things that are available there. Um, we had some ice cream from a shop and they had some really cool uh, flavors like saffron, uh, rose, cardamom, pomegranate. It was just a great place to visit. So um, the Little India spans about five blocks on Pioneer Boulevard between 183rd and 188. Um, it is serviced by Metro Route 62 or Norwalk Transit number two. And um, the intersection or the exit is Pioneer Boulevard and 183rd. So I had a great time visiting. Again, a great day trip. So if you're interested in exploring some things culturally, I couldn't recommend Little India more. The next destination is the Billie Jean King Library. Again, this was a popular destination for our clubs, a couple of our clubs. Um, it is serviced by Long Beach Transit and you see all those numbers, practically every Long Beach Transit bus goes there, but also our Metro A line or Blue Line the location is the downtown Long Beach station, which also serves a number of buses. The walk is about three minutes or two tenths of a mile. The library opened in September 2019. And you'll see um, our club, one of our, actually two of our clubs, I believe it was Long Beach and Weingart who participated in this tour that um, we went on. Um, but it's a beautiful building. It's about 92,000 square feet made of glass and wood, and it has space for 300,000 books. The library offers guided group tours by appointment. Billie Jean King was born in Long Beach, regarded as one of the greatest women's tennis players of all time. She's an advocate for gender equality and social justice and a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And there you see it there on the screen, which is pretty cool. Um, there's our group. I see some of our uh, buddies there, June and Vanessa. Um, they took a, a trip or were able to, to take a tour. Um, do we have any um, comments or questions so far? No, you're good right now. Okay, one more thing about um, the library. The library is offering um, <coughs> these virtual lectures and this one looked really interesting to me. And again, I'll share the link with you so that you can uh, join in, but uh, the library is offering um, uh, or presents a local history lecture series when water was everywhere, a novel view of life in early California. I don't know. I've been, we have been um, talking a lot about um, the history of California and specifically like Los Angeles. We've done a lot of talks on water with our friends. So uh, this really did um, speak to, to me and I thought that you guys would enjoy it. So I will make certain to share the link to this um, uh, special virtual lecture. If you have any questions, you know where to get me. Um, feel free to contact me uh, if you have any questions. Jessica, is our friend from RideCo on the line yet or not yet? I'm here. Yeah. Hey, Sam. Okay, Hi, see what, what time is it? It's about 1027. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And let's see, stop share. All right. Any questions? Anything look exciting? Are you excited to go anywhere um, specifically? I really do recommend Little India. It is a great spot to check out. Has anybody been to Little India in Artesia? Am I the only one? Oh, Elizabeth, you've been. Yes, uh, I went there. <laughs> about 20 some odd years ago to buy a sari for my wedding dress. Oh, cool. 
That's so cool. Any other destinations that we talked about that you all have been to that you'd like to share? Anyone? Hey, Lily? Yes. Lily? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I came in late. I had another appointment. But um, where is little I India? I, I, it's I'm in Artesia. Um, I'm, Artesia? Going, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm going to send all of these destinations to you all in an email. Um, you can you can check it out and, and do some research and see how how easy or challenging it is to get. I don't think it's very challenging. I, I'm, I traveled with a group from Burbank and it wasn't too terribly bad. So um, it's definitely a doable spot. Any other questions before I invite our guest? No, nope, we don't see any more on here. Okay. Citadel is fabulous for shopping. I go, I go to a, a teacher, Indian, you know, Indian place all the time. Oh, but good. I go by every to buy my girlfriend a Christmas present, birthday present. Oh, nice. And they, they yeah. love they love the scarves. <laughs> yes, beautiful, beautiful um, fabrics that they use. Okay, I'm gonna pass it over to my friend from Rideco, and he's going to talk to you about Metro Micro. Thank you very much. I'll pop on my screen here for just a moment um, to introduce myself. Hi, um, Sam. Hello, my name is Sam. I, uh, I work with Rideco uh, and we are, Rideco is the technology partner that um, LA Metro is partnering with uh, on an exciting new pilot project to bring uh, something that's called on-demand transit to, uh, to start back in December, two new zones for, for uh, transit. So I'll talk about those today. And I think on the line, it's a long participant list here, but I think Josh, are you on the line as well? Yes, hi, Sam. All right, I have Josh here. He is um, one of our outreach consultants that we work with. And um, anyone else from Metro on the line here as well, Patrick or Brett? Might just be us today, okay. Yeah, I don't believe they they join this meeting. Okay, that's okay. Great. So I have a, I have a short presentation uh, to, to walk us through today and uh, we'll give you lots of different information. So I'll just uh, share my screen right now and uh, throw that on. Can we see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. So in this presentation, I'm going to go over a few things. I'll talk about a little bit about the history of what, what this Metro Micro thing is and how it came to be. Uh, what exactly it is, some of its benefits, and um, we'll also talk about where this, uh, this new service is going to take place and what are some of the different ways you can um, connect into it, where you can go with it, and how exactly do you book rides using it. So we'll talk a little bit about the technical aspect, and then I'll finish us off with a conversation about um, just safety and security. How does COVID um, play into this kind of a service and what, are, what measures are we taking? Uh, to make sure these rides are safe, as well as uh, just safety and security overall. So just to give you a, a high level overview um, of the background. So Metro Micro is um, a program that was um, by design, it's a flexible transit service built in alignment and in synchronization with the next gen um, bus plan uh, that is rolling out in three phases across uh, LA County. Um, the goal of this project is to, again, we're providing service in these new areas in a new way. So we want to retain some of the, you know, we want to retain the ridership that exists in those areas. But of course, what we've done is we've opened up service to point to point travel, not necessarily just along a bus route. You'll see how that works in a second. So we're hoping that will actually grow ridership. Um, in a number of ways, we improve the customer experience. Uh, and then lastly, certainly right now, we want to just help riders get to key employment, uh, health services, and any other transit and mobility destinations. And so how Metro Micro works is it's going to work in six, it's going to be available in six different on-demand service zones. On December 13th, we launched the first two zones, which you can see pictured on this slide here. That's the Watts Willowbrook zone, which is the one on the top, and the LAX Inglewood zone, which is on the bottom. Sometime in uh, June or July of this year, we're going to be launching an additional four zones that are uh, named at the bottom right of the screen. Um, in addition, I think that the UCLA campus, there's been some talk that they might be coming back in some sort of a hybrid format. 
in the fall. So actually that launch might line up with that fall timeline as well. So let's talk about what it is. Um, Metro Micro is a, it's a new on-demand rideshare uh, service and it's designed to offer short trips, something about you know, one to five miles, anything from like 10 to 20 minutes within several zones across LA County. You'll see on the next slide, the, surface, the service uses smaller format vehicles. So we're not talking about bus here, but we're talking about like a fleet of smaller shuttles and vans. Um, you can fit typically up to 10 customers, but of course that's been greatly reduced right now to allow for um, proper distancing inside these vehicles. Uh, again, it's completely designed to complement the new next-gen bus plan and helps augment service in some of those areas uh, where it was challenging to run fixed route buses before. So we're offering some new service where there wasn't service before. And it also serves as a great first last mile option for any people who use um, other bus lines or connect to many of the rail stations that are also within the zone. So. Some of the benefits include, you can see right here, this is a first shot of, of what one of the vehicles looks like. This is a Ford Transit 150, typically fits 10 people inside of it. Right now we're only allowing a maximum of five people to allow for proper distancing. Uh, and in addition to that, there's a number of different other measures that I'll talk about later uh, to keep those rides safe. The Metro Micro program, what it'll allow you to do is travel actually point to point um, between a number of different stops within the zone so that you don't have to actually follow a fixed route that a bus would. You can go exactly from the point where you are to the point that you want to go, um, similar that to something you might experience with a taxi um, or with an Uber. Uh, and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail later on. With the service, when you book a ride, you can expect a maximum 15 minute wait time. So this is one of those things that make this service very convenient. Um, so no longer waiting uh, for long periods of time at a bus stop for a bus to show up. Uh, the vehicles themselves support a variety of different mobility options. Um, those include wheelchairs, strollers, and bikes. The other vehicle type that this program has in it is a Dodge Care 2019 Dodge Caravan that serves as the ADA uh, vehicle where you can um, book uh, wheelchairs, or sorry, accessible seating. Um, the vehicles, again, they have restricted capacity to allow for better distancing. Uh, the way that you can book a ride for this, and I'll speak to this in more detail, is in a few different ways. There's a mobile phone application where you can book the rides, and that's on the uh, Apple App Store and the Google Play Store for Android devices. Uh, you can also book it on the web booking site, which I'll provide the link to. And lastly, you can also book it through the Metro Call Center by calling 323-GO-METRO. Um, at, at its... Um, full scale, uh, which you'll see, I think, in the next slide. Yep. This, uh, this program is going to be six zones, and it's slated to have a 100 vehicles actually be a part of it, of this type you see here, in addition to the Dodge Caravan. And so this also makes a great local employment uh, opportunity for LA County. We're certainly going to be hiring and have been hiring many drivers from these communities uh, to serve um, uh, as operators for this service. Um, and so in summary, this, is, this uh, program is really just combining the best of public transit while taking advantage of some of these new cutting edge private sector technologies. So here's a look at kind of a zoom out of, of um, a portion of LA County where you can see just how many of the zones in, um, in pink that are going to be coming out. Zone one and zone two, of course, are these ones down here, which have come out already. And then later this year, we are going to have these additional four zones. Uh, also come out. The other, the one thing I will make um, kind of clear right up front here is that this is a pilot project. So one of the things that we're watching um, very closely are things like these zone boundaries and the hours of operation where a service like this is available to make sure that that's actually in line with the demand for um, demand for trips like this. So we're constantly watching the data and how many trips are being booked. We're constantly listening to the feedback of people who use this. Um, so in no way are these boundaries necessarily set in stone for the term of the entire project. This is just kind of what we launched with. So I'll, I'll just jump right here into a quick uh, interactive map where I can show you the nature of how taking a trip looks like. So this is the Watts Willow Brook zone, which I showed you um, from the beginning of the presentation. And what you wouldn't have seen before were these dots. And so what these dots are, the black ones, these are the actual existing bus stops that are within the zones. And the red ones are what we call virtual stops, which are 
well vetted, well lit, and appropriate locations to stop a vehicle uh, and get out on, um, on a side of the road. And so the way the service works is actually you can book a trip from any one of these points to any other one of these points within this purple service area. And of course, this is just one of the two service areas that are available right now. This is the LAX kind of Inglewood area where service is also available. So I just wanted to make that clear right from the get-go that the nature of the trips where a bus would typically go along a certain line in the zone, what you can now do with this new fleet of vehicles in the zone is book from one point to anywhere, even as far as here or here completely on the border, or even a, or a small local trip or a trip to connect into say something like a rail station like the Willowbrook Rosa Park station. So I just wanted to make sure that that was uh, clear from the get-go. If we zoom in and take a look at here again, that Willow uh, Watts Willowbrook zone, I just wanna highlight some, some things that you can um, uh, do and connect to in the zone. Of course, first and foremost, you can see that the blue and green rail lines go directly through the zone. We capture three stops along the green line and two stops along the blue line. The major kind of mobility hub, as we call it for this zone, is the Willowbrook's Rosa Park station. Uh, so you can take a ride from anywhere in this zone to that station. Um, in addition, there's a number of bus lines that still do go through this zone, and those are listed here. Uh, and lastly, there's, there's a number of different points of interest that exist that you can kind of travel from and to uh, within this service zone. If we take a quick look here at the LAX zone, similar story, you have the green line, which also kind of comes through it, the major mobility hub being this aviation LAX station. But again, you can take a trip from anywhere in this zone to any other point um, that exists. The only kind of caveat in this zone is we don't actually go to the airport itself. And the main reason for that is just the, the process of getting the vehicles into the terminal area and out of the terminal areas really just ties up the vehicle for a long period of time. So we wouldn't be able to provide that kind of on time performance and convenience like that we would like to. Okay. Here are the service hours for those two zones. The Watts Willowbrook zone, that is a 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., um, seven days a week, so 18 hours of service there. The LAX Inglewood zone, uh, just to launch right now, we're covering two large peaks, five hours from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., and another five hours, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., Monday to Friday to start. Um, uh, no weekend service right now. So the LAX Inglewood zone is a much more kind of conducive to uh, kind of a commuter type service. Um, and really, we're really seeing that be the case with how we're seeing uh, rides being booked. It's mostly people who are coming into that zone to work. Okay, so I'll talk briefly about uh, how you can actually book this um, service. So there's three ways. Right now you could go onto the Apple App Store or on the Google Play Store and search Metro Micro and you'll see the icon that's kind of outlined in blue under the number one there. Um, and you can download the app. Uh, alternatively, you can go to metro.net slash micro, and we have a link there to our online booking form where you can book the service. And lastly, you can simply call 323-GO-METRO, and a dispatcher there can actually coordinate with you and tell you exactly when, where you need to go and at what time to catch a ride um, on, uh, on um, Metro Micro. I'll briefly touch here on, um, on uh, the fare. So, Right now, there's an introductory cost to ride this service. It's $1, and currently that, that, that does not include a transfer to fixed route. Um, this is not set in stone. Again, uh, this is something that uh, we have this introductory fare period for six months, and what's going to happen is Metro is going to return to the board at the end of that six-month introductory period to consider any kind of potential fare adjustments or whether to include that transfer to fixed route. And it's just going to allow us time for through that six months to um, evaluate demand, evaluate affordability, and any other factors we may have not considered, just so that we're ensuring that that full fare price is equitable for the communities um, and the riders that are taking these trips and that Metro Micro serves. And so right now that is going to cost a dollar per trip and you pay that using a loaded amount on a fare card, or you can add your credit card uh, to the app. Okay. So if I, uh, I'll briefly just touch on uh, the application itself. It works very similar to any other um, kind of transportation based service like Uber or Lyft. It's based around the map, um, but there's a few convenient ways that you can kind of book rides using it. Um, 
So number one, once, once you kind of create your account, you'll see the map, you will be able to select your pickup and drop off address. And then you also have the ability to book uh, your rides in advance. You don't have to just book them on demand for when you want to travel. We have a button called multi-day booking and that makes this window pop up, which is indicated with the number three on the right side. Uh, and you can select up to seven days in advance to pre-book your rides. And uh, you only have to do that once and all of those rides are going to be pre-booked and committed to you right away. So that's a kind of handy feature there. Um, I'll show you these two phone images here. What they're illustrating is the many different seat types that you are actually able to book. So you can book a regular seat, you can book a seat with a bike, if you need accessible seating, or if uh, you're accessible with a companion, you can also indicate that, or if you are traveling with a child. Um, what this also indicates is you can book for more than just yourself. You can see we have that plus and minus on either side of the numbers. If you click those, it adds additional seats. So if you are traveling uh, with other people from your household right now, you can book additional um, seats for them on their behalf. And once you click OK, we'll offer you a few different ride options, and then you'll be able to um, you'll be able to um, select one of those, kind of confirm it, and uh, you'll be you'll be ready to go. I can quickly show you here on my computer. Um, Sam, we do have some questions in the chat box. That uh, oh, let me just uh, pop into there then. Okay, there's there's one. Um, about when will it serve the San Fernando Valley um, and cities uh, east of Pasadena? Um, I can show you the map one more time here. So you can see right here on the map, uh, we're basically looking sometime between uh, June, July of 2021, where we're gonna be launching that Pasadena zone. Um, and the uh, San Fernando Valley. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of what's slated for um, June, July. Uh, UCLA. That's probably going to be sometime around fall, twenty twenty one. Um, yeah. So hopefully that answers your question there. Any other questions? Yeah, yes, Sam. Sam this is, oh, Sam. This is Carlos Hernandez with On the Move. There's also another question around those zones in Pasadena. Will you be picking up in cities east of Pasadena? I guess we can't really see the, the zone of Pasadena on the cities there. So the question was around, will you be picking up in cities east of Pasadena? It looks like Altadena and Sierra Madre, both of those cities are east of Pasadena, right? Yeah, so we will only be picking up uh, within the bounds of the service. The reason I don't have a um, kind of firm answer on that is because these um, these about you know these kind of uh, the information on what these boundaries and service hours are going to be roughly are going to be fitting within this. So um, the exact boundaries for the zones that are slated for June or July aren't fully kind of. Um, okay fully ironed out yet. Of course, if you are a good distance away east of them, um, it is unlikely for yeah. the time being. Yeah. And, and El Tadina is, is um, northwest of Pasadena and Sierra Madre is north of Pasadena. So east of Pasadena is everything from Arcadia to Monrovia, whatever. So it's not on the map right now. So, okay, yeah. we'll wait. Good question, good question. Um, Sam, we have one more question um, in regards to the tap card. Um, mm -hmm. Will our tap card be valid or is there uh, a need for a special fare for seniors? It is right now just working off of a loaded fare. So if you add, if you add um, like a cash amount to your tap card, it deducts it by uh, $1. So one dollar is the fare for everyone, right, Sam? That's right. Yep. Yeah, and okay. that's again, that's just for now. That will be again be reevaluated in June, July of this year. And then I'm sorry, Sam. One more. Um, will hmm. Metro bus stops show micro icons as a stop? Uh, Metro, no, long term, they will not. In the short term, some of the bus routes that were affected by the next gen bus plan. 
uh, have um, have some markings that uh, the Metro Micro is available, but in general, no, the, there's no plan to have the bus stops themselves. Uh, and that's just also because we, we service more than just the bus stops. We have those virtual stops as well. That's okay, and then is there a charge for those who have an access card? Uh, yes, this is, this is going to be separate from access. I have a question. Uh, are mm -hmm. there any plans to serve Burbank Airport? Burbank Airport, no. There's uh, there's actually an, a, some additional zones coming online from a different project um, that's in Burbank itself, but the Burbank Airport itself is not um, is not part of that. The Metrolink station that is just outside of that is included. Okay. Just not the terminal kind of uh, road there. Yeah. Uh, can I speak? Can I ask a question? This is sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in Watts, and um, all I have is the flyers. About two or three of them left, and the metro is uh, hiring uh, the micro transit drivers. And I see some of the people have got hired already. Uh, do I have any new flyers to give them to advertise? All right, uh, I can use this one. Um, we, in Watts, uh, yeah, we actually have a few take ones. I think maybe that's something we can kind of follow up with after. We have a, a few different materials actually available flyer wise. We have some trifold brochures that are available as well. Um, do you mean specifically in terms of hiring or just information in general? No, information about the, 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 the Metro ride. <laughs> Cause I have yeah. five of the flyers they came and uh, dropped off for the Metro hiring. And I have five of them left, and I need some to explain the program a little bit more and how they can access it uh, for the seniors, so I can give it to them. Perfect. So I think what we'll do is maybe we'll coordinate with Lily and and uh, get you those materials. Okay, then. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Sam. This is Jessica from LA Metro. We have a raised hand by um, BJ. You can unmute yourself to ask your question. Maybe it was done in accident bj he keeps raising yeah, i have a question oh yeah. go right ahead when are you coming to san pedro and wilmington harbor city this program uh there's no plans for kind of additional zones right now again it's uh it's the pilot is just for these <laughs> six zones to start uh, I think the best place for feedback, which we can leave with Lily though, because we do want to kind of hear this kind of stuff, is we have a special email address set up for this, as well as the call center is also taking feedback on things like new zones and boundaries. So that would be the best place uh, to leave that feedback. Thank you, BJ. Ceci, did you have a question? Was your hand up? Uh, I had a question, but you answered already. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's why I had my hand up. I didn't know how to get it. I didn't know how to ask, ask a question, but I found out. Thank you. All right. I think. Okay, carry on, Sam. Okay, I just have a couple more slides here. I'll go back to where I was. Uh, so the, the last thing is just kind of health and safety um, in terms of uh, how these rides are kind of kept safe for riders during the COVID 19 pandemic. Um, and so, you know, first and foremost, inside of these vehicles, face coverings are gonna be required by both the passengers and the drivers. Uh, where Behind where the driver sits in the front seats uh, and before you get to the passengers in the back, there's actually a floor to ceiling um, partition made out of plexiglass that at all times will keep the passengers separate from the drivers. Um, we talked about already that the vehicle capacity will be restricted to allow for better passenger distancing. Um, so those vehicles are not operating in the full capacity as if they would be uh, pre-COVID. Uh, the, driver, the, the drivers themselves, they are trained on proper COVID-19 health and safety procedures, uh, and they have been provided with all of the proper uh, personal protective equipment. And then lastly, the vehicles themselves are uh, cleaned at least once daily with EPA approved uh, disinfectants. So lastly is uh, another just touch on, on security. So, you know, this is, um, 
uh, a, a service like this is operated by uh, you know Metro Micro drivers who are Metro employees. They have been fully screened before they are hired, and they've received specialized safety training, including uh, incident prevention. The vehicles themselves, both inside and out, they're equipped with security cameras uh, to provide an additional level of safety and comfort. And then lastly, on the uh, mobile application, you'll be able to track your Metro Micro vehicle as it arrives, as well as while you are on the vehicle using real-time location information uh, for pickup and for drop-off. And so that kind of brings us to the end of the presentation. If there's any kind of uh, lingering questions, I'm happy to answer them. Other than that, I will make sure these slides get through to, uh, to Lily. I have a question. Mm -hmm. This is Paul, and um, we have to take our cars down to the gold line whenever we travel, or we go up to the Montebello Town Center uh, to, uh, and catch another bus there, or we have to walk a few blocks to get to another bus that uh, is on um, San Gabriel and Paramount to get down to Valley Boulevard and catch or go wherever we're going to go from there. Uh, is it possible to get one in um, South San Gabriel for uh, Petrero Heights Community Center for our um, trips? Yeah, I think I think the best uh, kind of approach with that kind of a question is um, we'll take it down. I think I might just pass that kind of email along to to Lily. And if you provide that information to that email, I can make sure that that gets to our uh, operations team and they can kind of look into that. And then they're kind of collecting all of that feedback to, to see where the demand is for additional service. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you so much, Sam. Thank you very much, thanks for having me. This Absolutely. Was, uh, this was fun and uh, I'll, I'll connect with you on that uh, on the deck and I'll make sure I'll get the I'll connect with you on getting some of those flyers uh, as well. That would be great. Thank you so much, Sam. We are all virtually clapping for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Everyone. <laughs> all right. Next up is my colleague, Brett Roberts. I know I saw you here, Brett. Hi there. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brett. Good. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, let's see here, if I can share my screen. I'm not sure. I'm actually looking to see if I can do that. And if not, you, I will. You, sh you sh hold on one sec. Yes, you can. Yes, you he make. Is he is a co-host. He should have rights. Oh, OK. I, actually, I see it now. Brett is here to talk to us about the Willowbrook Rosa Park Station Improvement Project. And I haven't yet seen it in person, but it looks like it's going to be a great um, transfer point for us as we look forward to um, traveling on public transit. I just wanted to quickly um, answer a question, P, you know, I, I see in the chat, people are wondering, is it, is it okay to ride? We aren't encouraging our, uh, our folks that we work with to get out and ride just yet. Uh, all of the destinations I talked about were just uh, aspirational. This is what we, we aspire to do in the future. So just keep that in mind. We wanna still be very safe, um, but just wanted to put that out there. So I'll pass it over to Brett, take it away, Brett. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, Lily. Um, so I noticed there's a bit of a delay on my end. So hopefully everybody can hear me uh, at least, uh, if not real time, uh, not too uh, far after I said the last word. But at any rate, uh, thank you again for having me this morning. I just wanted to um, uh, chat with um, with each of you um, about the Willowbrook Rosa Park Station Improvements Project. Uh, this is actually so uh, just to kind of step back. Uh, uh, one of the projects that we recently completed 
uh, last year was our the restoration of the A line or the blue line, which was uh, the oldest uh, line that we have in our in our system that runs from downtown Los Angeles to uh, downtown Long Beach. So essentially that um, north south corridor. But in between, uh, there is uh, the Willowbrook Rosa Parks uh, station. So this is a station that's located um, in Willowbrook, which is um, right between uh, Los Angeles, the Watts area, and Compton. So it's an unincorporated Los Angeles County. So this particular station is actually one of our uh, most popular stations because uh, this is where I'm sure many of you that have, that have uh, ridden the Blue Line or the A Line before would transfer either to the Green Line, which is I think the C Line now. Um, uh, you would transfer to the C line, and then there's a, a whole host of municipalities, uh, municipal buses that you can also catch as well, whether it be uh, the Gardena bus, um, some of the other local shuttles, etc. So uh, this particular project was to restore uh, the entire um, the entire area. As I'm scrolling here, you can actually see a rendering of what it looks like actually at this point. So. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the area or unfamiliar with the actual um, station, uh, prior to uh, a lot of the renovations that, that took place um, over the course of the past year, um, the, connect, the station wasn't very well connected to the community. So in essence, you would get off the train and then from there you would have to walk out of the train station out to the sidewalk and then walk up the sidewalk. Um, to gain entrance into there's a shopping plaza that is adjacent to the train station. So you, you essentially had to go through, uh, it, you had to walk through almost, almost not an alley, but, you know, walk through a street. It was just very, just very disjointed. Um, and there are areas that quite frankly, uh, the safety could have been questioned on that as well. So all of that said, and going into the, uh, into the improvement project, um, a couple of things were, were you know, we wanted to make sure that the station was well connected uh, to the adjacent uh, shopping centers. And we also wanted to make sure that the uh, station itself was connected to the community in which it served. And we wanted to make sure that, that, that it was a lot easier. So if you see the arrow here, um, one of the things that we did was we extended the platform of the uh, of the A line station, so we brought it out and we built this walkway here. So what essentially um, can happen now is that when you leave the A line uh, and you walk out of that platform, you can actually just walk straight through the cus um, this walkway here, which feeds directly into the uh, Kenneth Hahn Plaza, which is the shopping center adjacent to the uh, uh, the platform. So you don't have to walk out. To the sidewalk, or you know, walk down this little narrow street, and then walk up, you know, uh, past cars to a sidewalk, and then walk all the way down to 119 in order to gain access to Kenton Plaza. You can just walk straight through. Um, in addition to that, we also wanted to double down on our customer service amenities that are offered as well to passengers. So a lot of um, a lot of passengers ask, you know, hey, where can we get our tap cards? Where can we or where can we refill our tap cards, et cetera? So we built a customer service center. This is actually the where my where the arrow is right here. Uh, that's a customer service center. And so again, once you uh, leave the A line platform, um, you would just walk out through the walkway, and you know you you walk through the Rosa Parks Plaza area. And then you have access to a customer service center where you can go um, and purchase a new tap card. You can refill your tap card. You can uh, look at station maps, et cetera. Or if you're looking to use uh, Metro Micro Transit, you can also uh, get a ride from over there as well. Uh, should you take your bike out? We also built over here to the right where my arrow is now, there's a new bike hub. So you can take your bike there, you can leave it there, um, you can park it there. So there's a storage facility there. You can, um, and inside of the bike hub, there's bike maintenance services. So you can, you know, if you need to do a quick tune up, fix your brakes, what have you, you can do that inside of there. Um, there there's also a shower facility as well. There's actually a membership 
uh, that um, um, is offered for the bike cup as well. So there's you know there's facilities in there for for those of you that want to park your bike, maintain your bike, um, or need a quick refresher before heading on to wherever you have to uh, head to. So uh, that's that's the bike cup, and then so actually right in the customer service center area as well. Another thing that was brought up to us is just overall safety and security. So we actually built out a uh, security center that's located right inside of the customer service center. So that way we'll have Metro security that will be on site and will be able to respond to any um, issues should there be any um, real time like uh, right there. So we've already have uh, you know the sheriff's office or the rock which is located just on the other side of the platform. However, we now have a Metro security hub there as well. Um, in addition to that, we also have traffic court too. So should there be an issue where somebody has um, a ticket that needs to be addressed that they got on a Metro system for whatever reason, they can go to traffic court. And as of right now, all of the, the hearings are done virtually. So you would go in, you pick up a phone and then there's a screen that um, uh, someone that would be responsible for the hearing would, would come on. So um, where we are, with the project right now is uh, we're, 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 we're near completion. A lot of what you're seeing here in this conceptual rendering has already um, been constructed. And so if you were to go to the system right now, you would see this, what you're looking at right now. What you wouldn't see is um, some are some of the things that are being currently worked on. So what's left? So there's part of this project also in, uh, includes a parking lot restoration. So the entire parking lot is being restored. Um, and uh, that we're looking at, uh, it'll probably be a couple of months uh, before that is complete. And there's also large scale artwork that's going to be installed as well. Um, what's being installed are uh, parasols, like large metal umbrellas that have imagery. It's that, they're actually really, really beautiful. We don't have renderings here on the site. Um, yeah, I wish we did, but we, we we don't as of right now. Our folks but, really love art, Brett. <laughs> yeah, I I wish so. What I might be able to, gosh, yeah, I, I might be able to get something. I can send it your way, Lily, and, and perhaps you may be able to send it out to folks. But yeah, if, well, if you can. Uh, close your eyes and just imagine the visual that I'm going to paint here. Uh, large scale umbrellas that have um, glass stones embedded in them. So that way, when the sun uh, uh, hits the top of the umbrella, you see a kaleidoscope, if you will, of, of colors on, on the ground. Ooh, and, that sounds beautiful. No, they really are. And then inside of that, you, you have um, imagery of Rosa Parks that, that will be etched into the into the parasols. So um, these are actually, uh, the parasols are actually done by the De La Torre brothers um, who, are, who are artists that are based between um, Los Angeles and Mexico. So they kind of, they have, uh, they're uh, binational artists and uh, their, their work is really great. If you were to go to the, to the uh, station right now, George Evans, who is um, a local photographer actually has some of his artwork inside of the actual, um, inside the customer service center right now. So his artwork is mainly focused on um, art, artistic photography of local residents. And so if you were, excuse me, sorry, didn't alert, oh, my email keeps going off. Um, if you were to go into the customer service center right now, you would see a lot of the images that came from George Evans that show um, local residents from Willowbrook, uh, from Compton, from Watts, um, all throughout um, uh, the area. And then, as I said, with uh, the De La Torre brothers, their artwork will be um, on exhibit. Uh, in the next, well, not exhibits, they'll actually be installed into the parking lot. Uh, within the next couple of months or so. So once that's done, then the project in itself will be uh, would be complete. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, I gosh, um, let's see if I. Yeah, I just have station renderings here on the site right now. But as I said, if I can, if I can find any photos, I most certainly will send those along so that way anybody on the distribution list can have those. But um, so this is what you're looking at right now. Again, uh, new bike hub. 
uh, new bike hub, new customer service center, an extended platform. Oh, I'll also add that we've also increased the lighting as well. So um, there'll be lighting, uh, new LED lighting that's going to be installed all throughout the parking lot, in addition to what was already installed um, as a part of um, uh, the construction that has been completed. So uh, that said, I will, you know, I'll, I'll open the floor up uh, to anyone that has any questions. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot again for your time. I, really I have a question. Sir. I have a question. Sure. Yes. This area you're talking about now, you're going to be a restroom there? Uh, no, there will not be. A, as of right now, there is not a public restroom. Um, we've heard we've heard that concern and and and, and trust. I, I've, I've, I've heard it. I've seen it, um, you know, experienced it. So it's something that that we very, 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 very important. <laughs> No, I, I agree with you. It's just as of right now, you know, there are there are other there, there are concerns related to security and things of that nature that, you know, so as of right now, it's nothing is built out into it. Although I will say that although it's not publicly accessible, the bike hub does have a facility for those that are that um, are, you know, members of the bike hub or, you know, get a membership. It's not open as of right now, so you know it's it's still something that's not uh, accessible. But I, I hear your concern, and, and we've heard that before, and it's something that we've um, that we you know certainly want to explore at some point. It's always a, a concern for all of our stations, really, and uh, bus hubs, um, and we know that it's a challenge, especially for the people that we. Um, work with, um, but we ha we really do try to find uh, strategies and ways to, um, you know, find bathrooms nearby. So, uh, but it, you, I think that was BJ who was talking. But yeah, we're we're definitely aware of the need of bathrooms th throughout the system. Really, what is the the new the big station they have in El Monte? Right, they have, they, uh, they have restrooms and they use quite a bit, quite a bit used, quite a bit. Yeah. They're, they're um, like a self-cleaning kind of bathroom where they sort of spew water all over to clean. But yeah, thank you for that, BJ. Any other questions? Do we have any questions in the chat box? I have a question, Lily. Go right ahead. This is Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Roberts, if uh, how is the security um, in terms of the new development? Is there more security because of this walkway because i used to live across the street at the gateway apartments and i i liked using the subway but i always had fear of uh, because there could be someone lurking behind the corner of the building if you're walking there so i guess i wanted to know if there was going to be ample security and if it was going to be like 24 hours or however long the trains are running Sure, sure. No, and, and that's a great question. So, um, yes. So to, to answer your question, yes, um, there will be ample security. So we, we do have a security hub that is uh, that is built into the customer service center. So what that is, you know, what that means is um, we're able to have staff, uh, Metro security staff there inside of the security uh, center. So in terms of the overnight uh, security, there is um, uh, there is a security service that we use. So the Metro security staff, oftentimes, and I mean, and, and it's not it's not concrete in that uh, a lot of the security staff that we have in the evening are our private security staff that we that we employ. Um, whereas our Metro security staff are accessible so they may be patrolling the line so they may not exactly be there in the office they may be somewhere along the a-line maybe at the artesian station compton station etc doing their patrols but there's always going to be somebody that is our one of our security vendors who will be located there um, on site so it will be a lot more secure in, in my opinion just because okay. again you have the you know you already have the sheriff's department that's still there and you have the increased lighting. The LED lights are really great in that they make the area a lot brighter even when the sun is down. And then you're gonna have security staff real time that's gonna be based out of the customer service center. So if there's an issue, 
if you you know push the I think it's like a blue the blue box, um, okay. th that's going to go directly to security board and they're on site. Thank you. Hey Brett, this is Stacy. Hey there, how Stacey. you doing? Good Hi. Good. So we have a question: Is the platform <clears throat> still open air? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, we've extended the platform out. So we, we extended the platform to the south. So uh, the platform is longer. So that way it can connect to the customer service center that you're seeing um, on the left and on the left and on the right. But yeah, it's still open air. You would uh, you essentially, you know, it's the same platform, um, newer and better looking um, and more, you know, more aesthetically pleasing, so to speak, but it's still open air. And um, yeah, it's, um, you know, and it just has just been updated aesthetically. And then we had a question about um, how is the access from the blue line to the green line? Okay, yeah, uh, so access still remains the same. So I will say that right now during construction, there may be um, a staircase that's down or, or what have you. So there's gonna be some impediment just because there's still ongoing construction um, around the station on it's, and for some of the elevators that are being updated. So. Um, that said, there's still connectivity. So there's always, we always want to make sure that we're, you know, as well ADA compliant. So there's always going to be an elevator um, that's going to be available for you. Um, there will be an escalator. So as of right now, I mean, everything is still connected, um, you know, between either one of the elevators or one of the escalators between uh, um, the green line or C line, I think it's C, C and, and A. Um, yeah, as of right now, but again, there may, one of the staircases may be out because I, I um, am aware that they're doing some refacing on some of the stainless steel for one of the staircases, but we always, there, but there's always gonna be a connection between the two. All right, any other questions out there, guys? Brett, I'm trying to like visualize the station because I haven't been there in quite some time, but it is how many levels? Because you're down at the freeway level, right? So I, I would say there's two levels. So, well, three, maybe, no? Maybe two and a half. I was okay. say. Yeah. So essentially, you have your, your, your plaza level. Um, your plaza level is going to be the area that um, we're looking at right now in the imagery. Um, so that's plaza level. That's plaza level. Um, once you go to the platform um, where the actual train is, there's like a mezzanine level, which would be um, right above that. And then once you get up to the, I guess technically the third level, I just, I'm not sure if I should call the mezzanine level a level because there's not really much that you can do there. You can actually, um, you can, there's some tap machines and so forth there, but then that third level would be where the freeway is and that's where the, um, the green line runs essentially along the lines of uh, the 105. And is it just the plaza level that had the most construction? Was anything else um, updated in any way? Well, aside from the elevators, uh, the elevators and that mezzanine level have been updated. So uh, the elevators, escalators, so all of those, you know, go back and you know, those uh, feed into each other. The actual green line itself, that platform, no, it's uh, it's largely just going to be the um, um, the plaza level, uh, the mezzanine level, and the elevators and escalators that service the green line. Got it. Okay, that helps. Yeah. That does help. But yeah, yeah, you're gonna see you're gonna see the bulk of you're gonna see the bulk of the project on the you know on the plaza level and on the um, actual platform level for the uh, for the A line. Got it. Okay. And Brett, there was a question about the elevators. Will the elevators be kept cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's always a challenge for us. Um, and we and we try our best to have our facilities maintenance team ensure that, you know, uh, everything is kept up to, uh, you know, up to, you know, our, our, our cleanliness, our cleaning standards, however, you know, unfortunately, you know, there are challenges that we face, um, you know, with many of our, um, many of our elevators and, and there are challenges there. So I will just say that, you know, uh, unless there's something that, you know, that changes uh, dramatically, um, 
Yeah, I, you know, it's a tough question to ask, but I will say that, you know, we do have a facilities maintenance team and we do um, try our best to ensure that those elevators are cleaned on a scheduled basis, um, you know, per day. Um, I just know that, you know, we're also unable to, you know, to respond, um, you know, in real time to certain challenges that may present themselves. So, but we will certainly, you know, work uh, work at it just to ensure that uh, the elevators as they possibly can be, uh, because it is, it, it, it's a concern. I've seen it and, um, you know, it's something that we want to do. Any other questions for, for yes, Brett? Yes, I have a question. Go right I ahead. I have a question. Yeah, my name is Jeff Paget. Um, anyway, isn't there any type of uh, uh, plan to uh, do something about that uh, Green Line platform where you get on the train and you're you're exposed to the elements and the, the no noise and everything? That was that's, an engineering. That's the fun of it. That's with. the whole adventure of it, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not a pleasant experience, especially when it's raining. I mean, isn't there any plans for that? To improve that? Uh, I heard, uh, I don't know how long ago, it, you know, un unless it was another complaint like I'm doing, but uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so I, I I can't speak so much as to the to the to the green line. However, um, as of right now, you know it, it's the way that the the way that the station is. It, you you, um, I'm thinking about it right now. Just being like, so there. Well, I'll say like this: there aren't any there aren't any direct plans as of right now for any uh, uh, projects that are specific to the green line. Um, that's something that I can. Um, that I can inquire about, um, you know, down the line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but as of right now, there aren't any uh, there aren't any specific um, uh, projects related to that station uh, for the Green Line. However, I will say that when it comes to our, you know, when it comes to the um, uh, bus shelters or our, you know, any of those um, um, uh, methods of transportation that you're waiting on, there are canopies that you can wait under so um so it's not as though you're mm -hmm. exactly exposed to the elements like should there be rain or something like that you know you are standing under under okay. in the green line it's not it's not exactly fully exposed um you know to the elements so there so, so there are areas that you know you should be able to at least stay dry should there be any rain. yeah yeah but i don't know i can't be the only one that uh as this uh, concern, but um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no problem at all. Thank you. It is definitely <clears throat> challenging writing the green line, um, but yeah, uh, pl plan your trip so that you're not standing out on the platform for as long, and see if you can, you know, sort wow. of limit the time uh, you're out there exposed. Um, do we have any more questions out there? All right, I think I think that's it. Brett, thank you so much for joining us today and bringing us up to speed to the the goings on down at the Willowbrook Rosa Park Station. I know that we are excited to get out on the move and back on the system, and hopefully uh, that will be sooner than later. So thank you so much, Brett. Oh, most certainly. Thank you for having me. I hope to see all um, all of you out there on the uh, on the A line someday. Awesome. All right, Brett. Will you stop sharing? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right, friends. Thank you so much for whoa for joining us. What's that? Uh huh. Go um, ahead. We have money on our tap cards. Do we still have that, or is that gone now? Call the number on the back of your card. 1866 tap to go and ask, hey, what's going on with my funds? I've been dormant for a while because there's a little pandemic going on. Right. Um, right. And if it's not there, they can sort of uh, re make it appear because sometimes the, the <laughs> funds do sort of disappear if you're inactive for 18 months, which some of us may be getting close to that actually because right. we're, we're, we, we've been uh, laying low for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So call the number, Paul. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? 
I'm interested to see what did you guys think of all of this? Is there anything that's sticking out in your mind where you're thinking, oh yeah, that's a good one to know? Yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, there's several places I want to visit. So I'm looking forward to being able to get on there and travel again. I know, me too. <laughs> and, and again, this is all just sort of, we're looking ahead to the future, right? We have to, we still have to stay safe right now and limit our exposure. We want you all to be safe, but I don't know, am I the only one who's feeling hopeful <laughs> and can yeah. see the light yeah, at the no. end of the tunnel, I think, right? I think so. Yeah, I so, you know. The stay at home order has been lifted for now. So, you know, that's good news. That is good news, but that doesn't mean that the virus has gone away, right? No, of course not. <laughs> That is good news for the businesses, and I hope Combine that, that with the availability of the vaccine. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you said you're looking hopeful. I am too because of those good. things. Um, yes, I am yeah. too. I'm I tired of being locked up in my house. Oh no, I know, Elizabeth. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> I have. A, I have a, injection on Thursday. I have a comment. Yes. Go right ahead. Which one? Did you hear me? I heard you say something about Thursday. Yeah, I get my first injection on Thursday. Mike Yay. and I get our first vaccine injection on Thursday. Hallelujah. So happy for you. That's good um, news. Um, hi, Lily. Um, this is Mary. I was hi, wondering. Mary. Hi. <laughs> I was wondering, um, is, um, are we still, is the fair still free uh, on the public transit or... Uh, I, I'm always freaked out. I always want to take my cap card, but then I have to reactivate it, you know, so um, <laughs> at I don't this want time, any yes. surprises when I get there, you know what I mean? Yes, at this time, yes, Mary, you're entering at the rear if you're riding the bus. It's not free on the rail, so if you're riding any of our trains, you still have to use your tap card to, to board. Shelly, uh, did you have a question? You. Your hand's up. Go ahead, Shelly. Oh, hi, Lily. Hi. Well, I just wanted to know um, what's the status on the Crenshaw line? Crenshaw, we might have to have a separate meeting on Crenshaw. Um, I don't have any hard dates for you. Um, so, Lily, what they're saying is to be determined uh, yeah. 2021. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we've been told. So, yeah, thank you, Stacy. Um, mm -hmm. Stacy stays abreast of all of the goings on in that part of town. So, um, Shelly, as soon as we get like the go ahead, like let's start talking about it. They're gonna come and talk to us, okay? I promise to bring them in so that if you have any um, specific questions, we can answer them. I have okay? a question. Delor hold on, hold on one sec, Dolores. Your hand is up. Do you have a question, Dolores? Yes. Um how do you get notification for on the move uh, tours and trips? Good question. Um, I, if you're on Facebook, I highly recommend that you like our page. It is on the move writers club. If you search that on Facebook and like it, uh, I put all of our announcements on there. So you could check it periodically to see what events we have coming up. Um, I am going to, again, follow up with an email. And if you haven't been getting um, email invites, let me know, respond to the email and tell me, can you put me on the mailing list? Because what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take all of the people who RSVP to this, I'm gonna follow up with that list. So if you're not getting regular emails from us, we send them out probably monthly of the things that we're doing. That's a, another way to, to stay connect, connected, Dolores. Hey, Lily, I put the link up to our Facebook page on the chat already. Oh, too. cool. Thank yeah. you, Carlos. And there was, there was a question there from uh, Cece regarding uh, what about translation in Spanish? I'm not sure what it was referring to, but Cece, if you're on the call, could you elaborate on that question? Oh, Ceci, no es Ceci, es Ceci. Hola, Ceci, buenos días. Hello, Ceci. Sí. Hola, escuchen. Hola, Ceci. Sí. Hola, 
Ah, mira, porque mi, mi primer lengua, my first language is Spanish and my English is not so, so good. Okay. Sometimes I would like to participate, but the, you know, I think in Spanish, but the translation is difficult for me. <laughs> uh, and, you know, my first language is Spanish. I know I need to learn very good the English, but the, I'm, I'm very interested about the information and I am a good travel for the bus for years, you know, because Ooh. I don't drive. I don't Muy drive. Bien, I, only, I only use the buses and, and I love the, the metro, you know, and I, and I go around all the places with the buses and have a good job for me. Where do you live, But, Ceci? I live in Whittier and right now I am in Southgate. Okay, very uh -huh. good. And, and, and my English, uh, sometimes when I am very nervous, it's good. It's very fluently. But when I am thinking, it's a uh, it's lucky. <laughs> I, I know how you feel, Ceci. I, I yeah. have the same problem, but in the opposite way. My English is very good, but my Spanish is not very good. And sometimes I have to, I think in English, and then I have to say, oh, God, what is that word in Spanish? So, you know. Your Spanish is so good. I, I, have, two, I have two questions. I yes. have two questions. I have yeah. two questions. Go ahead. Uh, on on the, the places where there's metro micro, uh, do they have the tap line there? Tap line there too? Just the tap line? The tap line? Yeah. I'm not there's following. A local line. A tap, uh, a tap. Are you asking, can you pay with your tap card? No, no. Okay. I'm not following okay. your question. Okay, another question I have you. Uh, all of you uh, uh, on the on the, the trips, you know, you, yeah, we get emails on them too, don't we? We don't have to go to Facebook for them to find out. Can we get emails on them? Yeah, you usually do get emails, but for some reason, I think uh, not everybody is getting emails. But you can go to Facebook if you want to, BJ. Yeah, you know, you're not familiar with the tap line, the buses, the local buses. I sure don't. What city is that in? Uh, San Pedro, Wilmington. No, I'm not. I'm not familiar with it. It's not a metro service. Yeah. Okay. Tap. No, I'm not familiar. He's with probably it referring either. to Dash. Oh, is it Dash? That, I'm sorry. That's a Dash. Oh that, yes, Dash. <laughs> Now, are there any are there any cities that, that that you have the metro micro in? Not not in that area, is Because my understanding. It feels, it feels like it's kind of it's kind of the same service. So LA, the LA city operates Dash and it's a different service. So they may have some sort of um, service that you can connect to, but we're a different agency and I'm not aware of it. I can do some research and get back to you. Okay. All right. Hey, Any other, me. yeah. Yes, um, going back to your presentation, I did have a question from Dina. She asked, is there a reason why they refer to gateway cities as gateway cities? You know what, good question. I don't know what the reasoning is. I'll have to look up, look into that and say, why did they, I don't know, maybe no, they're, uh, they're the might gateway have, to Los Angeles? Might have something to do from the port of Los Angeles since Long Beach is included. Yeah, could be, good guess. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do some research, guys, and, and, and see if I can include it in my email. I'll say, they call it Gateway Cities because of this, but sorry, I don't know the answer to that right now. You know, that's another, another point I want to bring up. Yes. When, you know, we have a gateway here in San Pedro and Harbor City. Yeah, that's what Marilyn was just saying because of the this, port of Los this, Angeles. This uh, yeah, that's right. I thought that's what this was when I, but it's not. You're talking about another area see, completely. Well, Gate no. San Pedro is a part of Gateway Cities, I believe, or maybe it's South Bay. Gosh, I well, think it's, it's, a, a little, it's a little area that South uh, like Bay, Harbor Lily. City yeah. and uh, and, uh, and Wil uh, not Wilmington, but Harbor City is a little area that, that runs runs uh, or uh, uh, south and, and west. Got it. South South and north. It's Got called it. they call it a Gateway area. Got it. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, guys? Thank you so much for joining us. It was so nice to connect with you, even if it's via the, the computer. I can't wait till we can come together. Um, look out for an email from me with all of the uh, destinations and uh, information on Metro Micro, and um, I'll, 
I'll make sure to, to attach everything there for you so you have it all in one place. All right. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you all. It was so nice to see you all. Have a wonderful day.